Wow, that was a big one. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Bottom of the Stream Movie Show. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome back to the world famous Bottom of the Stream podcast. I said my name in a really creepy way then. And I don't know why. I'm just plowing through. Okay, okay. Adam. <laughs> this, this is what made us famous. It's a movie show. <laughs> yeah, it is. This is the movie show. It's the penultimate movie show of season six of Bottom of the Stream. So we are, we're getting towards the end of another season. It's 24 out of 25. Yep. We're three years old now as well. We missed that anniversary last week. But oh, we brilliant. Are three years Happy old birthday. Now. Three years since the first episode came out. Happy birthday to you too. So this is uh, fastly coming up on the end of season six. Very fastly. Heading towards the third annual Boscars. This week, next week, the last two chances to crown a table topper. Yes. So can anything knock a puzzle off its perch? Yeah. Let's find out, shall we? What have we got this week? This week, we have watched a film called He Never Died. It was released in 2015. It is an 18. It runs for one hour and 39 minutes and is currently rated at 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb. 6.4. Thoughts? I'm surprised. High or low? It's on the higher side of what I... If you asked me before, where do you think this would be rated? Yeah. I don't think I'd go that high. Having seen it? Still a bit surprised. Okay, interesting. Um, this film stars a guy called Henry Rollins. He plays Jack. Henry Rollins, I don't know how he has enough time in his world to do what he does. <laughs> so busy guy. On his Wikipedia, it lists his jobs. Okay. So currently, he is known as a singer, an actor, an author, a poet, a spoken word performer. He also runs his own record label and his own publishing company. And he's a film critic and a radio DJ. What a guy. And he's probably got a podcast because most people... Sure, have. sure. It's insane how much stuff this guy... How does he find the time to do it? Who knows? Who knows? Um, he hasn't really got anything that's been his like, breakaway acting role, I don't think. I, yes, but I... He's just always there. I knew there. that this was Henry Rollins. Yes. And I knew he he came to fame in Black Flag, yeah. punk band. Yeah. But I also know I've seen you in loads of movies. Yeah, he's been in loads I of stuff. I can't pull out... Any of a particular movie that I remember him being in, but I know that Henry Rollins, and I know that I've seen him in a ton of movies. Yeah, he's just one of those names that's been in loads of stuff, and he's never really had his own like projects that he's been in charge of until this film came out. Okay. Um, this film also stars a guy called Boo Boo Stewart. Um, he plays a character called Jeremy. You were most he's most famous for being in the Twilight films. Okay. He played Seth in all of the Twilight films. Oh, sure. Sure, somebody's watched. Never them. seen him. Nor have I. This guy's 28 years old currently. Oh, really? Yeah. He has 118 acting credits wow. on his IMDb. That is insane. <laughs> how many t- how many credits he's got? He's a lot of it's like voice work or kids TV and stuff like that. But yeah, he's he's a very prolific worker. Wow. He works a lot. Good for you, Boo Boo. Boo Boo, good for you. Um also, this film stars a guy called Stephen Ogg. Do you know who Stephen Ogg is? I do know who Stephen Ogg is. Who is he? Uh I would say he's most famous. He's one of those faces and you'll be like, oh, I've seen you in stuff. Yeah. I would say most people would recognise Stephen Ogg, though, not from a movie, yeah. but from a video game. Agreed. The most famous video game. Yeah. Uh, because he, his likeness, he played and his likeness, uh, you will see in Grand Theft Auto 5. Yeah. He is Trevor. He is indeed Trevor. The main main protagonist, second main. There's like two main characters There's in three. the game. There's a three. Okay. <laughs> Switch between them. Sorry, have you never played it? I have played it, but that game's nine years old now. I know, and as it's actually survived it's three generations of PlayStation on yeah. the new generation. Yeah, it came out on the PlayStation Three. Yeah, and it's now being released on the PlayStation Five. So I have played it, but probably nine years ago. <laughs> um, I knew him from The Walking Dead. He's in The Walking Dead. Yes, he, he was is. in The Walking Dead for a while. He was. One of Negan's henchmen. I think. Uh, I've also seen him recently in Snowpiercer. Yes, he was in Snowpiercer, the TV show. He's also in Westworld. Yeah. Uh, Better Call Saul. He's been in a couple of yes, episodes of. He has. Uh, the Tick. There's the list is endless. Uh, Film wise, probably Solace. He was in that. There's there's loads. You you just he's just one of those guys again. He plays the bad guy in this. He's, who is called Alex. Yes. This film was written and directed by Jason Krawcheck. Okay. I'm going with that. I'm fine K R A W C Y Z K. Krawchick. Always good with a when you've got Zs and Ks going around. <laughs> uh, this is his second feature film that he's directed. Um however he has not directed a film since in the last eight years. However, he has written another film. Yeah. 
He wrote a film called She Never Died. I did read about this. <laughs> um, he didn't direct it, but he did write it. Um, it's cla- it, it's described by him as a sister quasi sequel to He Never Died. Okay. Uh, but it isn't available on any viewing platform that I could find. That's so a shame. It came out four years later in 2019. So I assume it's the same film with a lady. Main uh, essentially, so I read a bit about this. And after uh, He Never Died, the yeah. success or not of this. Is uh, it, this is classed as a cult movie, I think. I think people follow this movie. Yeah, potentially. Um, they tried to get a TV series off the ground. Okay. Starring Henry Rollins. It was going to be a continuation of this movie. Okay. That that's then awesome. morphed into She Never Died, which is essentially a remake of this movie. Yeah. Um, and that's what happened in like, that show. I liked how he described it as a sister's sister quasi-sequel. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's basically the sister movie is a sequel, but it's also not quite a sequel. Yeah. That's what he described it as. Uh, that was released in 2019. Do you have a one-word review of He Never Died? My one word review yes. would be biblical. Biblical. If for a, a very rare occasion I was allowed to have a more than one word review. Oh, that's never happened. No. It would be, that's got to be Kane. <laughs> I might put that sound bite in there. <laughs> oh, these microphones are pissing me off. I need some new ones. Where does this film start, Nick? I've just put, there's a cacophony. It's just noise, yeah, isn't it? The, the start of this film is just noise. There's like horses, yeah. and war, yeah. and and screaming, aeroplanes, yeah. and machinery, just happening yeah. in the darkness. I've written hell noises, okay, because I figure that's probably what it was. Yeah, that's what hell would sound like to me. Yeah, that's kind of. I think they t- they turn out to just be history noises. Yeah, I think so. It's just yeah, memories. Yeah, yeah. Um. And then we see a man. He gets woken up by a knock at his door. He does. He's got a scarred back. He has two big scars on his back. On his shoulder blades. Yeah. Which they never really reference. No, not again. No. <laughs> Almost like he we never maybe see was winged. Again. Yeah, it was, at some point we assume he was winged. Yeah. But we've never been... Uh, that was never clarified no, if he was not. or not. I hadn't given that any thought until we just said <laughs> it. But th- that is true. It never mentions it. Uh, there's an old lady at the door. Yeah, she wants uh, her rent. She wants her rent. She's, she's the, the vicious landlady. She's, she was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> she was the vicious landlady. He slams the door in her face. Um, he goes, How did he get his money? Yeah, so he goes to get his money. He opens a chest in his bedroom where there's an awful lot of money. It's a, it, there, there are many chests, yep. trunks, yeah. trunkies. <laughs> I don't know the plural, in, in this Chests. man's flat. Yep, there and are. there's all sorts of relics. In Paraphernalia. It. Yeah. Good word. Thanks. <laughs> I'm just having a conversation yeah. with him. <laughs> um, he gives us some money and she puts the door in her face again. Um, oh, before he does that, though, he says, uh, what time is it? And she tells him the time. It's like two in the afternoon. He's literally just woken up. Yeah. And then he says, what day is it? He has no clue. He's got no clue where yeah. he is, basically. And then he goes out and he heads to a church, heads inside a church. And we hit the title card. He never died, comes up on the screen. Um, and then he comes out of the church, followed by a load of people. We don't know what he's been doing in there. We do find out later on. Um, and then he goes to meet a guy in a car. A nurse. A nurse. Well, someone in scrubs. Yeah, this is B.B. Stewart's character, Jeremy. Um, and he buys something off him. It's like some sort of car boot back market trade. I, was like, I thought on. he'd won the meat raffle. <laughs> it, it's, it's a plastic bag. It, it looks something. like a joint. It does. Yeah, like, like of meat. Of meat, yeah, like a pork loin. Yeah. He gets home, he pops it in the fridge. Yeah, he puts it in the fridge. Yeah. Um, and then a girl knocks on his door. This is like, the, on- the only other thing to add there is like, we get the impression this is a regular exchange. Yeah, there's something that's happening quite regularly. Yeah. These two are meeting up and buying, selling each other Buying stuff. stuff out of the back of a car. Yeah. Always suspicious. Yeah. Have you ever done it? Yes, actually. <laughs> oh, wow, he's got a story. <laughs> Funnily enough, I have bought meat out of the back of a car. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. What sort of meat? Cow. <laughs> I'm going to say cat. <laughs> No. cow yeah. can't eat cat you're going invisible no because my one of our friends has got a small holding okay and every year they tend to kill a cow farming it's, like it's called pagan ritual <laughs> no. <laughs> no and um just one y- y- yeah okay uh and and sell it oh, and he's like well i'll be in Do you want some cow yeah basically <laughs> so i've got a half a freezer full of joints wow. and mints and nice uh steak and and they'll be like right i'm in tesco's car park 
<laughs> it sounds really good. Literally it? sells it from a supermarket as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on this day, between us, I was come and pick up your bag of meat. So, bag of meat. Yeah. So yeah, I have bought meat out of the <laughs> back of the car. <laughs> Hopefully not for the same reason that yeah. uh, Jack's doing it. Um, briefly after this, a girl knocks on his door. He answers the door, and she runs away straight away. Um, we're not quite sure what's gone on there, but we do find out. Then a little while later, two guys knock on his door. They're looking. I think they're looking for Jeremy. Yeah, the ty- this is. I quite liked how this was trying to discombobulate us yeah, as as our main character is discombobulated because the way it's edited is that someone's always knocking at his door. Yeah. But I think in reality, some time has passed between this girl yeah, yeah, yeah. getting there, walking away, and then these two goons. I think it was the same day, up. but some, some yeah. time later yeah. in the day. Because he's like passed back out or whatever. Yeah. Uh, some goons knock on his door. He's quite, he's got a very strange delivery, Henry Rollins, in this film. It's, he's very monotone. He's very, I don't know how I'd describe it. Very matter of fact. Short, sharp, doesn't care if he pisses people off. Tell, Not a people tell you person. The truth. Yeah. His performance. I found really hard to judge. Yeah. Because I almost want to say it's not good, but it's not supposed to be. It's intentionally. It's what he's doing, he's doing intentionally. Yes. 100%. But also, I don't think he's that great an actor, but it fits really well. Yes. It kind of it works. Like, I'd say what you're saying. It's a, it's a bit Keanu y, isn't it? Yeah. Because I think, you know. A lot of people wouldn't say he's the best actor, but it fits for what he, what he does. does. The roles he takes on. Um, yeah, and so it's hard to, for me to say, and I know we'll get to it at the end, whether Henry Rollins was good in this or not. Yeah. He was the right fit for it. He was the right person. There's probably two scenes where he actually does some acting. Yeah. And yeah, the, the rest of it is just monotone, short, sharp, and one word. A lot of his lines are just one word, yes or no. Yeah. There's not a lot of converse, conversation going on. <laughs> um as is exactly what happens here. These two guys knock on his door. One punches him in the face straight away and he completely no-sells it. As if he does. He completely brushes it off as if nothing happens. And he pushes this guy. They're looking for Jeremy. Yeah, they are looking the for way. Jeremy. Um, and then he pushes this guy out of his door and just shuts the door. He does. He's like, he literally one hands him straight out of the door. Uh, then they kick the door in. Um, this is where they reveal they're looking for, that he's looking for Jeremy. Uh, and then he rips one guy's balls off. Oh, I thought he crushed them. <laughs> he very much crushed them. Yeah, he just he literally he grabbed the grabbed guy by the ball bag and squeezed through his jeans and just squeezed. Ugh, it was horrible. Um, and then the other guy goes to shoot him, and he puts his hand over the barrel of the gun. Yeah, and the gun backfires, and the guy catches the bullet. Yeah, he's going the wrong way, and he the, hands. think it blows a hole in his in Jack's hand. And then he just kicks them out into the oh, corridor. Oh, they spray him in the eyes with mace. Mace, yeah. Just before they leave, they and spray him in the eyes with mace. And then he just throws them out in the corridor and shuts his door again. And there's, it's comp- He's been shot in the hand, yeah. punched in the face and sprayed with mace. And he's completely no sold all. Pretty much goes back to bed. Yeah. I've written two lines here. I've written, that was awesome. Because that was awesome. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> it was really good. And I'm like, at this point, I understood what sort of film I was getting. Yes. Because I'm getting Don't Kill It. This, this, yeah, kind of, it's yeah. very much yeah. the same vibe as Don't Kill It for back from season one, maybe I think season so. two, season yeah. one, I think. It very much gave me that same vibe just from that opening yeah. scene. It necessarily go in the same direction, but I was like, okay, I'm going to enjoy this at this point. I knew I was. Um, then he heads over to a cafe, diner type area uh, where he meets up with Kara, who's the waitress who works there. <laughs> so we now know that uh, our, our main character... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. You nearly went to cough, and then yeah. you didn't cough, and then you did cough. We now find out that our main character is named Jack. Yep. Uh, and he has gone to this diner. He is a bit worse for wear. Yep. Because his eyes are very red from the uh, pepper spray. Yeah. He's... And he has kind of bandaged up the hole in his hand. Yeah, but he doesn't really feel like he needs to, I don't think. He's just done it for no. public image. Uh, he sits down and we very quickly learn uh, from his interaction with the waitress that he is there quite regularly. Yeah. Uh, as in, day. like, multiple times a day. Yeah. Potentially for every meal that he eats. Yes. Uh, and the waitress clearly likes him and she's kind of, like, she's... trying to hint, are you going to, what are you doing tonight? You, yeah, she's stumbling like over trying to ask him drink? out, wasn't she? Yeah. Um, he doesn't know. He doesn't read things like that. He has no, no. like, human interaction skills. No. Um, he goes home. So he finishes his whatever he had to eat and goes home. And he gets a telephone call. This guy's constantly being disturbed by life. He is, yeah. He, he just he, wants he just, to like. He just wants to have a quiet life and live lie down alone. in his bed. And yeah, do nothing. Not be shot. Uh, this is a lady called Gillian. 
Um, and she wants him to pick up Andrea. And he has no fucking clue what she's talking about. No. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, what's an Andrea? Yeah, he's like, who are you? Do I know you? Who's an And what is an Andrea? And eventually... And he's like, he, this was a funny conversation. It and was, this it was, was one, where Rollins was quite good. Because he yeah. says to this Gillian, who we never meet in this movie, no. by the way. He's like, I hate you. He Why does, are you yeah. ringing me? <laughs> that really made me laugh. I'm like, I love the fact that you can just say that to somebody over the phone. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he literally does. He's like, I hate you. Why are you calling me? And Gillian says, well, Andrea's your daughter. Yeah. And... Jack says, well, you could have afforded an abortion. <laughs> yeah. Abo- he's like, never call me like, again. Abortion's like $200, never ring me again. And then puts the phone down on her. It was a very humorous conversation that was also sets the tone for where this movie's going yeah. now. I thought I really enjoyed it. The opening 20 minutes of this film are brilliant. I really enjoyed it. I thought this, the way you introduced to Jack and the way he develops that character so quickly. You know who he is straight away. You you said it right. You quickly understand what sort of movie you're getting. Yeah, hundred percent. And it it does its little. I know it's it it's this film is basically set in three locations. Yeah. The, the diner, the the club, and the apartment. Yeah. Uh, and the church occasionally. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it builds its little world really quickly, and yep. you know where you are. Yeah, there's no uh, messing about. It's 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 one thirty seven. It's quite a long. Not a long film, but longer than our normal films. But yeah. There's no messing about it. It doesn't... It's straight in. This is who Jack is. This is what he does. This feels streamlined. It does. It, it feels really does. It feels focused. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Oh, so, so then after that phone call, he does... He goes out, goes to a bar... Yeah. ...to try and track down this girl that he's been asked to yeah. pick up. So it, the basically Gillian was like, you need to go and pick up Andrea. She's drunk and she always she, drives home. Gillian says to me, he, she came to your apartment and yeah. she, and you scared her off. Yeah, and he's, and like, he's like, I didn't scare her. I haven't seen anybody. And then anymore. he remembers, oh yeah. yeah, a girl was at the door. Yeah, I don't know who it was, but yeah. it was at the door. And uh, Gillian says to him, look, she she gets drunk. She has this tendency to get drunk, and then she has a tendency to drive home. Yeah. And you need to stop her doing that as her father. Um, so he does. He goes out to a bar to try and find her. Um, he finds out from the barman that she left with a guy called Tim. Uh, so Jack manages to look him up in a phone book and finds out where he lives and goes to his apartment. Sure. That all happens quite quickly. Uh, he answers the phone. The phone? He answers the door. He does. Um, he speaks to Tim briefly and then uh, Tim goes to fetch Andrea. She's absolutely fine as well. She's not... She doesn't seem... She's. I think she is She's drunk, drunk. but she's not like... But she, beyond... She, yeah, she recovers quickly. drunk, yeah. Because she is talking quite a million miles an hour at yeah, this point. Yeah, but she does all the way through. Yeah. She's She's a... And she's like, you, yeah, you're my dad. Blah blah blah. blah. Can we go for food? Can I stay at your place? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my fav- one of my favourite lines in this whole film comes at this point because he's like, before she manages to really talk, he's like, well, you seem fine. I'm leaving. Don't die till you get home to your mum. <laughs> I really thought I thought it was really nice. Don't die until you get home to your mother. Um, but she, she leaves Tim. She goes. Oh, she does go up back with Jack. Um, and they go to the diner again, have some dinner. And whilst he's there. He's trying to catch a glimpse at Andrea's back. Yes. So we are briefly like aware of these back scars he's got again. So he's looking to see if she's got wings. Yeah. I guess. Or had wings or yeah. whatever at some point. Because she's talking to Kara like they're old mates. Because those two develop a friendship very quickly. Yeah. Well, Kara's like, whoa, Jack, you've never brought anyone in here before. Who is this? Yeah. And I think at first she's like, oh, is he is this his having a wave? Yeah. And, and uh, Andrea quickly says, no, this is my dad. Yeah. Which Throws surprises Kara yeah. even more. Um, Andrew reveals that she wants to stay at his for the next two days um, which is fine he's happy with that um, the next morning he goes back to the cafe back to the diner again and there's a mysterious man sitting there a man in a hat yeah he goes out really early in the morning it's like six in the morning yeah um, there's a man in a hat sitting in the restaurant in the I've called it a cafe a diner and a restaurant now it's a fucking diner uh, so Jack sits at the bar yeah and the man in the hat's in a booth behind, behind him, him. And then, but then he's not. But then he's not. He just disappears. When he gets home, Andrea's on the phone. She's calling home. I assume she's on the phone to somebody. Yeah. And Jack just takes the phone off her and hangs it up. Yeah. It's really funny. Um, and then he leaves her. He goes. Well, I'm going out. He goes to meet Jeremy again to get some more whatever he's buying off Jeremy. And the two guys from earlier, the goons, the goons from earlier, are there with Jeremy. Yeah, they've got there just they, ahead of Jack. They kidnap him. They take him. They do. They they beat him up and they chuck him in a car and drive off with him. Yeah. Jack sees this and I don't think it's a, a I want to save Jeremy 
I don't think that's what he's thinking here. He's like, he needs the package. I need the package that's in Jeremy's Cause they car. Because ta- so. they take Jeremy's car and the car. And the car. In. So I think he's like, well, I need to rescue Jeremy so I can get the meat out of my car. Yeah. So he, t- he steals a post office truck. He does, yeah. So he, he takes out the mailman and steals the truck and follows it. Um, he follows them there, gets all the way to wherever they're going. And he takes both of these guys out in another very funny, violent scene. Yeah, a guy hits him in the head with a hammer and he just shrugs, shrugs it, it off. off. Completely shrugs so it off. So then he just pulls the guy's eye out. Yeah. That was grim as well. He did that. He tried to do that a couple of times in the film. He was yeah. squeezing people's heads to make their eyes pop out. Um, so he does. He takes them both out. Was it the same two guys? It was definitely yeah. one guy. It was the same was two it guys. The, both the yeah. same two guys. Okay. Because he, he seemed to be in a pretty decent... He wasn't limping like he'd just had his no, and, crushed. And these two guys were like, seemed surprised every time this guy didn't die from <laughs> yeah. being shot. Even though I think they fight him three, 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 three or four, four times. times in the movie. Yeah, but the, the the lack of limping was like, yeah, I'd be limping a lot more if he'd mm-hmm. crushed my balls. But again, I think some time had maybe passed. Possibly. Um, he he rescues Jer- he takes those two guys out, rescues Jeremy, unties him, gets the package out of the car, gets the package out of the car, and he throws dro- Jeremy in the back of an he ambulance, leaves Jeremy in an open ambulance yeah. that he finds somewhere, which I thought was quite funny, and then goes home. Um, he reveals why he goes to church. He takes Andrea to church, and he goes to play bingo. Yeah. Um, with the. the Elderly people that play bingo with in the church, and he tells her he he'd been out to get his medication. Yes. Ooh, what does that mean? Don't know. <laughs> um, he says he plays bingo because she's really like you. Don't seem like a bingo type of guy. Yeah. With old people, and he's like these people don't distract me. Yeah. I can just sit and the world can just disappear while I'm playing bingo, and that's basically why he's doing it. Then they go back to the diner because, like Nick said earlier, there's only three sets in this room, and. Somebody, whilst he's waiting for his drink to be served, puts something in his drink. Yeah, he's, he's roof is Jack's drink. He does, indeed. Um, Andrea asks Kara out on a date is on it? behalf of yeah, Jack. Yeah, come to bingo next time. Yeah, come with us Two days time. time. I think he's, he goes like three times a week. Yeah. Uh, but the mysterious man is also back there. He is sitting in the booth behind them. And Andrea can also see him. Yes. So he is. And Jack, this really puts Jack out. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, you, you can, you can see, see him too. Yeah. He's like a mystery to me. So he says to her, whatever you do, never talk to him. Yeah. Ignore him. But even if he talks to you, just pretend you can't hear him. He's like, never have any interaction with whoever this man is. Which I thought was really interesting. I was like, I wonder who Yeah, it was a good is. tease. Yeah, it was. They go home. They go back to the apartment. Yeah, Jack like stumbles a couple of times a couple on of the times, way home. Yeah. Well, he's been drugged, but he doesn't, he's not aware of this. Um. And when he gets home, he spots there's some people outside waiting for him. Yeah. So he goes. It's the same two goons. Yeah. Plus a new bold new, goon. A new goon. Three goons. Um, so he goes outside to see what's going on, and just as he gets outside, he the drugs properly kick he in. Passes out. And in he the passes alley. out in the alleyway in front of these guys. <laughs> and they go to throw him off a bridge. Yeah. So he comes round, and the, he's on top of a bridge. Yeah. This in is chains. really funny. I like this. Yeah. So they've got him chained up. There's three of them there trying to chuck him off this bridge. And just as they're about to throw him over the edge, he wakes up and he grabs one of the guys and they both go over the, over the they bridge. They do. Which it was really good because the other two were like, shit, what do we do now? He's just taken that guy down with him. Do we dive in? Do we leave him? What do we do? They yeah. were really confused. But they decided to just leave him in the end. They do. They drive off. <laughs> they drive away. And they're yeah. like, the guy's not going to come back despite all they've seen. Yeah. He's they're dead like, this time. We've yeah. chained him up and thrown him in the river. They don't get very far down the road before Jack does come back. He wanders out in the middle of the road. To the street. He's ripping these chains off him. Um, and then the, he rips a guy's throat out. So this is the same guy whose balls he crushed. Yeah. So he, this he, is it for him in this He film. pins him against the car just and rips his throat out. Rich, literally grabs him around the Adam's apple and just squeezes until it pulls out. Yeah. And then he eats it. He does eat it. <laughs> he eats the flesh that he's just ripped out yeah. of this guy. And I'm like, yeah, we're getting... This isn't... What I was that's kind of what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting it to be this funny. I guess I don't think I was it expecting is funny. It, it is, is funny. a funny movie. It's very much don't kill it. It's yeah. the, exactly the same vibe as that film, but it's not as Bash comic it. booky. No, it's not as no, it's not as crazy as that. Yeah, well, a lot. Of no, crazy it is shit. crazy, but a lot it's of crazy not, shit goes down. It's not as don't kill it was a long time ago now so we're trying yes. to think back but it that was more batshit wasn't it it was like there was stuff going on constantly all that the time was more then. cartoon violence yeah, i would, I would say. agree with that this is quite gory yeah. but also quite funny at the same time when he gets back to the apartment andrea says look where have you been you <laughs> why are you wet and he's like well it's raining she's like it's not raining what are you talking about he's like i've been 12 blocks away it's raining there 
Um, and then he goes straight back out again. Um, but before he goes, he's like, right, you need to leave now. And he's quite rude to her. He's like shouting at her, swearing at her. Um, basically get the fuck out of my house. He, it's his he's way trying of to trying to protect It's his way of trying to make her go somewhere safe. Because he's cause now he, realising that he's... People are after him. Yeah. We don't, and he doesn't even really know why. We don't no. even really know why. He tells he's got 60 seconds to leave. Yeah. And he calls her an unaborted brat. <laughs> That's so harsh. So she does leave. She, um, well, she gets angry. She walks out and leaves. Yeah. He he looked at this point like he was going to turn into something. He was so angry that his his face was distorting. Yeah, he he's was going screaming. a bit like veiny, and his mouth opens wide. I thought, is he some sort of ve- werewolf or there's something? A, but... he just there's some demon shit going on. Yeah, here. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what's happening. But he screams this really guttural scream, yeah. and yeah, he's he's not a happy guy. But he seems to manage to control it, and he calms himself down. We just both turned the page at the same time. Um, then guess where he goes? Diner. Back to the diner. Um, when he gets, it, there's a lot of scenes in this where he just goes to the diner and nothing really happens. Sure. And then he goes home. And when he gets home this time, he kills his next door neighbour. Um, uh, yeah. Because his, his neighbour plays loud music. Yeah. It's quite noisy. Um, he's quite insulting to the landlady as well. Yeah. They're having an argument when he gets back about his loud music. Um, so he basically follows his neighbour into his apartment. We don't see him kill him. We just hear a lot of the violence and, in this movie does happen off screen. Yeah. And it kind of works. It, does, yeah, it's not, it, it doesn't take, any, take it away no, from me. No, I don't me. think it did either. And actually, I was almost more forgiving of that because I felt, like I said earlier, this was quite focused and the filmmakers were kind of like, well, if we haven't got the budget for all those effects or yeah. all those we can, uh, practical effects, then we're going to pick and choose the ones that we want to put on screen. Yeah, we've kind of got, like, we can handpick the, the best ones and... It it felt like this movie knew its limits. Yeah. To best maximize its money and the effects. Yeah. And we quite often don't see that. No, not at all. So the, I really appreciate films it. Films will either go all out and try and do it and fail, yeah. or not try and do it and fail. Yeah. So it was, it was quite a nice, uh, well directed film. I it think. knew its limits. Yeah, it really did. Um, then he turns up to Bingo, but he's an hour her, an hour early, and th- this was quite funny as well because the old man was like, "You're an hour early. What are you doing here?" And the guy's like. Jack's like, what time is it? And he's like, nine. So like, I've been here since six. Yeah. And it's just, it's so deadpan all the time. The time means like, nothing to him for a reason that we'll find we'll out. We'll find out, yeah. It's literally, he doesn't really care about time. Same as you this week. You have no concept yeah, of time. True. Um, and he plays bingo this time, but he said earlier, the last time he played bingo, that he only ever plays with two tickets. Yeah. This one he's playing 30, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a shitload of tickets going on. Um, then he goes back to the same bar that he went to earlier. No, not the diner this time. Now he's gone to the bar. Um, I think at this point he's looking for a fight. He's, it's a trying to get in fights montage. Yeah, it is. But everyone's really nice. Everybody's really nice. It's really funny. It's like he drops some cash. Yeah. Expecting like to try and start something. And the guy's just like, dude. You've dropped your money. You know, look after yourself. Be more, be more careful. Um, he, kicks, he kicks the jukebox off in this bar full of people. And yeah. nobody's really bothered either. He sort of shoulder barges a, a group of youths. And, and the guy's like, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, dude. mate. Yeah, really, yeah. really sorry. Uh, until he finds some yuppies. Yeah. Let's just find some dudes. And then they fight. give him what he wants. Yeah, because he throws up on one of them. Yeah. So he's like, well, you've got to fight him and fight him now. He's thrown up on him. Um, but that fight is off screen. Again, we don't see it. We yeah. know we, we saw him trying to pick a fight, but we don't see the fight. We, we, see, we see the aftermath, which is Jack coming back into his apartment. He's yeah. covered in blood. Well, he's not to start with. He's, it, it's quite good because he's standing at his sink washing his hands off. Yeah. And then suddenly he starts bleeding through his shirt. Correct, yeah. Now, I thought that was really good as yeah. well. I was like, well, what's happened there? And then he gets it. He's got an answering machine message on his phone. Is it an answering machine message on his phone about telling him to go to the docks? Yeah. Um, it's basically go to the docks. We've got Andrea. Um, she's your daughter. You need to go to the docks to rescue her. He says be here by midnight or we're going to kill her. Because we've already killed Gillian. No, it's, it's funny, but it's delivered funny because yeah. the, the hostage guy's like, well, I'm, also, I've got some bad news. <laughs> we didn't mean to do it, but we've accidentally killed someone called Gillian. <laughs> We was Andrew's mum who we yeah. said he hated and never wanted to speak to her again. So he's, they've accidentally killed her. And, but he doesn't go to the No, docks. he's not bothered. He's not bothered in the slightest. He's got no love for humans. He doesn't care. It doesn't yeah. bother him at all. He goes to the diner. Um, and he talks to Cara a bit. Says that he, she asks him, are you okay? Because uh, you look a bit beat up. But he's like, no, I'm fine. Um, and then Cara gets a message from her manager saying there's a guy outside. Yeah. 
Um, oh, he was on the phone to start with. And yeah, then he, then and he then he's the outside. outside. And the, man, the manager of the diner is like, just sort this guy out. Get rid he's of supposed him. supposed to be at work. Causing a scene outside yeah. my diner. Um, sort him out. Um, it's her boyfriend. It is. It's also Tim. Yes, from earlier on. <laughs> who Carl went home with earlier, which is a weird coincidence. Um, I presume just because they couldn't afford to pay for another actor. Fine. Presumably, fine which is fine. Because it's a massive coincidence. There's, it's not like Kara met him at the diner. She yeah. met him at a bar randomly out of nowhere. Uh, the other waitress goes to call the police yeah, because it's kicking off outside. Some, we don't know what's kicking off, but something's kicking just off between all the Cara screaming. and Tim. Yeah. Uh, Jack's like, hangs the phone up on this. He's got a habit of hanging the phone up yeah. on people. Like, I'll go and sort it. I got it, is what he says. Um, and he does this thing. He's got a really good way of pushing people. He kind of just pushes, the, puts his hand on their chest and just pushes them backwards. Yes. He does that to Tim three times. And I was like, this is brilliant because he's going to kick off and yeah. it's going to not go well. Um, and he does. Tim punches him. Um, Jack gives absolutely no reaction whatsoever. And then he spits blood into his face. Yes, he does. It was <laughs> disgusting. It really was. And th- the guy who plays Tim, I don't know his name, apologies. He His reaction to that was brilliant because it was exactly how anybody would react. He was gazumped. He was like, what Complete. the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and he looked disgusted that somebody had spat blood in his face. And from what I can understand, Tim and Kara used to be in a relationship. Correct. And they share a car. Correct. Which they brought when they were in their relationship. And they both need. And they both need said car. Yeah. Kara had the car. Tim had come to collect the car. Correct. Tim then leaves with the she car. He's like, you're not having it. I'm having it. Yeah. Tim leaves with the car. Jack lets him have it, um, which pisses Kara off a little bit. He doesn't care about cars. He walks yeah. everywhere. He it's walks everywhere. A... It's not an issue for him. Yeah. And he doesn't care about humans either. And she's like, now I've got to walk home and I live 12 blocks away. And Tim's... and Jack's like, right, see you. Have a nice walk. Yeah. And he just walks off. But it turns out they live in the same direction. Yes. So Jack lives six blocks away. So they walk together. They, they do. They have a bit uh, of a bonding session. And and he accidentally kind of walks at home because they're just chatting. Yeah. Um, he realises he hasn't gone to the docks. and he's He, says, so he says to Kara, what time is it, by the way? Yeah. Again, the theme of this film. She says it's 12.48 a.m. Yeah. And he's not bothered that no, he's, he's missed like, it. Shit, I've not gone to the docks, but oh well. Yeah. It'll be fine. Um, they have a bit of a chat. They um, And this really made me laugh. Because Cara, as they're talking, Kara says, where's your daughter? Yeah. And Jack says, she's probably with her mother by now. <laughs> Knowing that her mother's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Which was funny. Good line. Good um, line it was. They have a chat and she's Jack. Um, Kara says to Jack, who are you? What do you do? Or what, have you, what jobs do you do? What have you done? And he reels off a whole list of jobs. It takes about two minutes. Ta- I've got the list. Do you want me to read the list? Uh, have you got them all? I've got them all. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only because it's an IMDb's trivia section. Brilliant. So, as listed, Jack's career choices. So, he starts off, he's like, I was a bodyguard. I was an antiques dealer. This made me the most money, probably. Uh, business over- owner, several times. Construction, truck driver, teacher, mostly history. Military, this took a good part of my life. Manager for a whole slew of businesses. Landscaper, fisherman, bootlegger, wreck driver, miner, coal, silver, and gold. I was a stuntman for movies, nurse, and a medic dra- during my medical ser- military service. I was a cook. I was in prison for a good amount of prison. Uh, professional gambler, horse breeder, potter, tinsmith, blacksmith, retail for almost everything, and a mechanic, but I was never a waiter. <laughs> the, it's at this point that we think, Jack's quite old. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Kara's thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. She's like, this guy's not right. Something's not right about this guy. But she's still, she's intrigued yeah. by this guy. And she responds with, well, I did four, four years of business school and now I'm a waitress. That's my life. <laughs> that's what I've done. Um, and that's when he says, I've never been a waiter. Um, then they have a hug. She they hugs do. him and he they hugs her hug. back. He does yeah. actually show some yeah. affection to her. And then <laughs> she's like, right, this is me. And he's like, okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> she just leaves. He just leaves her there. Um, he gets home. He then opens a bag of blood and spills it all over the floor. He does. He really messily opens his bag of blood. <laughs> yeah, he's got a messy bag of blood. Which is obviously what he'd been buying from Jeremy. Yeah. And... It just goes everywhere, and he yeah. has to lick it he from licks the floorboards. It up from the floorboard, and then he says, "This could be bad." Yeah, that was his line to himself in his apartment. He knows that he's losing control of whatever he is, yeah. and I thought that was a really nice line as well. Uh, then he starts cleaning it with a sponge, um, and then he wrings it out of the sponge into a glass and starts drinking it. Then the next day, he does go to the docks or to the club or wherever it was. There's somewhere at the docks. It's not the docks. It's not. Well, the docks. It, it's at the docks. Yeah, but it's a club. Yeah. At the docks, yeah, which is where I assume they. Because I first thought he was going to the docks, yeah. to see what was going on. Which he, I think he was, but also just as more out of curiosity. It turns out than he's going else. to a club where yeah. he used to work. Yeah, he used to work there. 
So he knocks on the door. It's one of these like knock on the door, see if you're allowed. Also, in the hat man's club. in the background. Oh, was he? The docks. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, he knocks on the door. The man opens the shutter in the door. It's one of these type of clubs. And he's like, nope, you're not coming in. Um, and then he's like, where's Tom? And the guy's like, Tom's dead. Yeah, he doesn't, and Jack's like, he doesn't look after this place anymore. Oh, yeah, Tom's dead. I remember that. Where's Alex? And then he goes to find Alex. This The man, security guard man goes off to find Alex. It was a bit of a longer scene there, but that's basically how it comes out. And then uh, Jack just reaches in and opens just reaches the door through, through the, the door. peephole. Yeah, and uh, lets himself in. Um, and he basically just follows the security guard into Alex's office, where he meets Alex. Alex is um, Stephen Ogg's character. Yep. Um, this is the first time we meet him in the film. He's not in this film a lot, but what he does do, he's, he does well. He's he is the antagonist. Like, yeah, he's probably in like three scenes, yeah. though, if that. Um, so he meets with Alex. Um, basically, Alex says, look, I'm in charge of... Whatever this place is that he's gone to, sure. Alex is in charge of it. He says, "Yeah, you used to work for Tom, my yeah. predecessor." Yeah, uh, but you know what? What are you here for? Dad. Basically, I think it was his dad. I think it was. I got I the think, impression yeah, that it was his right, dad. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Jack basically says, "Did you order the kidnapping of Andrea?" And, and Alex, yeah. So like, there's obviously a history here. Yeah. He knows between. he's a big time gangster, yeah. basically. And he's like, "No, I've never even heard of Andrea." And Jack pretty much straight away goes, "Okay, fine." Yes, but he also has like spidey senses. Yeah. Because he can hear some like whimpering from behind the bookcase. Yeah. Um, but then he le- he leaves he leaves this time. That's the next time he goes back. So he leaves. He's like, "You'll never see me again." He says that's the last thing he says to Alex, which he seems to say a lot. He said it to Gillian as well. He did. Yeah. <laughs> he goes back. He goes to, um, to bingo. Goes back to playing some bingo. Then he goes to the diner. When he gets to the diner, the owner or the manager is dead on the floor. Yeah, he is. He's pool, pool in a of pool blood of blood. His head. And the diner itself, when he turns around the corner, is full of baddies. There's an ambush set. Yeah, there's loads of goons in there. But he, he just no-sells it again. He just walks to his table. Walks to his normal table, sits down. Kara comes over and offers him a drink. She's shaking. She can barely She's hold the very coffee much pot. Um, and as she pours, leans down to pour his coffee, she just says, help. Yeah. Like that, which I thought was quite nice. The other waitresses are all back in the corner of the room, cowering of what's going on. Um, he's like, right. Jack says, what? Well, uh, yeah, I need, I need the bathroom. I'm going to the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom. A guy follows him into the bathroom. Um, he draws a, a, well, at first I thought it was like a knife. Yeah. It turns out it's an ice pick. Yeah. Which I assume he got from the diner. Yeah. And he goes to stab Jack in the back with this ice pick. And the next thing we see is Jack coming out of the toilets alone. Then he goes back to sitting down. He says, Kara, sit down. Kara's too shaky. She can't sit down. Yeah, she won't she's sit like, down. Sit down. He's basically demanding that she sits down at the table with him. And she's like, what's that in your back? And he's got an ice pick sticking yeah. out of his back. Um, and she says, she says to him, yeah, he completely just pulls it out. She says to him, are these people here because of you? And he's like, yeah, probably. Again, completely no sells everything. Um, he stands up, another guy comes up towards him with a gun. Well, no, the guy goes into the bathroom first. Yeah, there is a guy goes into the bathroom. Obviously, clearly off screen finds the (laughs) presumably dead dead body. Uh, So he just walks up to Jack and shoots him in the head. Yep, completely point blank in the head with a pistol. And, this was all the more effective for all, a lot of that other violence happening off screen. Yeah. Because we literally the first see Jack's really head see. explode. Yeah. But he can, again, doesn't even stagger backwards. No. He can, he does a Chris Rock and completely no sells it. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Chris Rock never even back, took one step backwards when he took that slap. Yeah. I was proud of the boy. Um, then, but then it does cut away. So all we can see then is chaos. We can hear chaos inside the diner. Sure. There's smashing. The there's. There's flashes going off, yeah. there's smashing, there's screaming. Gunshots going off. Gunshots going off. A man ends up flying through the window that we're looking through. Um, all the staff then come out and flee. The two waitresses come out and like run away. Yeah. Um, then Jack comes out with Kara. He's dragging <laughs> yeah. a goon behind him. It's, it's the eye patch goon from earlier. It's the, the very guy first who's, goon. guy whose uh, eye he squeezed out. Yeah. And he says to Kara, can I, have a, can I have a ride? And she's like, no, you're a crazy man. I can't believe what I've just seen in there. Yeah. Whatever I've just witnessed in there has really turned her off, Jack. Yeah, yeah. he's got bullets in his head. <laughs> he has, to be fair. Three, two at this point. Um, and he says, right, if you give me a lift, I'll give you a million dollars. Yeah. And then, then the next scene, they're in the car together. Um, he puts the uh, not dead dude in the trunk because he's quite dead, but not quite dead. Puts him in the trunk. And she, when he gets back in the front of the car, he uses her toolbox. And she's like, is that my toolbox? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I've got to get these bullets out of my head somehow. And you get some like needle nose pliers out, and they get right in that forehead properly. In don't they? We've that's two times this season we've seen people digging into other people's <laughs> heads. 
Um, and he's like, if I don't get these bullets out now, they'll heal. The skin will heal over, and I'll get migraines. So I'm getting these bullets out. It's of my just head. deadpan, isn't it? Completely. All the way through. His tone movie. never changes. Every line he delivers in this film, he delivers in that same deadpan tone. Um, and he does. We get quite a graphic scene of him pulling the bullet out of his yeah. head. Um, it's a really satisfying clunk when he drops it onto the <laughs> dashboard. Wow. And Kara's freaking out. She's driving, but she's also freaking out. Um, and they together drag the man, the kidnapped man. I think he's called Stephen, we find out at this point. Yeah, I think so. Um, they drag him back into Jack's flat. Yeah. Uh, just before he gets there, the, the landlady comes out. She's like, I haven't seen that that guy who lives opposite you for a while. Any idea where he is? And he's like, no, I've not seen him. No. So this is why they're standing in front of this this unconscious body. That this little old lady completely upstairs. misses this dead body. Yeah. Completely just doesn't even notice it. She's completely oblivious of it. Um, they go into Jack's flat. Um, Kara's having a bit of a route around. Jack takes the man into the bathroom. Yeah, and Kara's looking through up. one of Jack's trunks. Yeah, she kind of full of money. A bit and of a route around antiquities, and she finds a photograph. She does, and it is a presumably First World War photograph. Yeah, nineteen fourteen. Yes. from. and she she says to him, "How is that you in the photo? Because yeah. it clearly is him." He's like, "You sure it's not a father? Yeah, uncle, grandfather? Yeah." And he's like, "No, I, that was me. I was in the trenches." Originally, she's like, "How is that you?" And he's like, "I don't know." <laughs> Straight away, he's like, "I don't know." And then she picks up a wine bottle and he's like, wine's supposed to get better with age, but that one's 450 years old and it's probably not very nice anymore. <laughs> and she's like, and then she's, she's all the time you can see her thinking, who is this guy? And he's, you don't really get a lingering look on it, but the, the, the trunks are all full of treasures Yeah, from, from hu- throughout human history. Yeah, there's loads of stuff in there. Yeah, priceless, priceless no. stuff. That he's gathered over the years. And she says to him outright now, she says, how old are you? And he's like, I have no idea. But I'm in the Bible. Yeah. He says, if it helps, I'm, <laughs> I'm in, in the, the Bible. Bible. Uh, like, my name was Cain. Cain. I am I am known as Cain, but yeah. I'm, my name is Cain. Or the other way around. I'm known as Cain, but my name is Cain. And she's like, if you leave now, you will never see me again. That's that's the deal. If you, you want to go now, go now. Yeah. You'll Take some of the money. Again. Take as much of the money as you want. Yeah. You'll never see me again. And he then leaves to go and speak to the guy who he's got tied up in the bathroom. Stephen. Stephen's phone rings. It does. This is where he speaks to. It's Derek. Derek. It's I knew the, it was a It's, it's the guy who left the answer phone message earlier. Yeah. He's done all the comms for this this uh, yeah, he's done all group of gangsters so yeah. far. Um, and Jack says to him straight away, "Where's Andrea?" Yeah. Is she alive? Have you got her? And he just hangs up the phone. He doesn't get an answer, so he just hangs up the phone. He's like, "What the fuck are you answering Stephen's phone for?" <laughs> yeah, it's quite a good uh, good little uh, message again. Um, he hangs up the phone. He says to Stephen. Who hired you? What is going on? Stephen completely doesn't know anything. Um, the phone rings again. He lets Stephen talk to Derek this time. And basically, Steve's like, Steve's quite scared. He's he's seen he what is. everything this guy's gone through in the last hour or so. And he's like, uh, they're sending somebody over. So you might want to go. Yeah. And then somebody shows up before he's even left the bathroom. There's somebody Yeah, because there. they say there's a conversation to the effect of like, no, the guy they're sending this time is the dude yeah seriously jack you, you need to get leave. out get out and obviously he's not bothered he's not bothered in the slightest um before he can do anything though this guy does show up he gets into the flat and when he when jack leaves the bathroom car is still there and he's like i thought you were leaving she's like i, I didn't i didn't leave i think she, yeah she's still a bit <laughs> shocked about this whole turn of events so the dude's like right come on jack we need to go you and me let's just leave yeah and so they do and they get outside the flat, and then all of a sudden there's a gunshot, and Jack walks back in again. Yeah, and there's just spray it's on the blood, wall. blood splatter all over the wall. Oh, so, and Jack's yeah. got another bullet hole in his head. Yeah. So it's so, the third bullet hole in his head now. So this guy who was supposed to be the, the ultimate yeah. assassin is just dealt with off screen, which I like. Completely yeah. hallerons it straight away. He says to Kara, right, you do need to go now. Take the money. And yeah, get yourself somewhere safe. Get yourself up here. Get yourself out of here. Away from she me. Starts, she starts packing. He starts packing a chest. She starts packing up some money. Um, and then he cuts the dead guy's finger off. He does, yeah. So I thought, oh, he's going to use it as some sort of trade to yeah, say snack I've killed, for your, the road. killed your main guy. It turns out it's just a snack for the road. He says some Latin to a knife at one point as well, which is a bit strange. Um, then he used to do his finger. Then he, spit, he spits the nail out when he's finished yeah. the finger as well, which I thought was quite a really great scene. Really great scene. Um, then he goes to visit Jeremy in hospital because we figure out, or we 
we've kind of come to the conclusion that this is all to do with Jeremy. Yeah, because Jeremy... he, he knows Jeremy's into something with these guys. Yeah, and Jack's and, happened to somehow manage to get involved uh, in it. And uh, Jack's kind of figured out, well, Jeremy obviously owes these guys something. Yeah. Uh, and that's the question he asks him. He's like, what are who are you involved with? Who do you owe money to? What, what the hell's going on? And after a bit of pers- gentle persuasion, Jeremy uh, says, it's a guy called Alex. Yes. And... There you go. That's your, That's link, your link clicking into place. Everything clicks into place. Um, Jack leaves Jeremy and goes to see Kara because he needs a driver. And there's a really funny line here as well because she's like, you told me I'd never see you again. That was like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she refuses to drive him, but then eventually... He says, I need help. I need, a, I need you to take me somewhere and I need, then I need you to take Andrea. Yeah. So Andrea and Kara developed a bond quite quickly yeah. and Andrea will now, Kara will now do anything to help Andrea. So she agrees to do it. Because it's to help save Andrea. She nearly uses the word vampire in this. She scene. says vam. Yeah. She says, are you a vam? And he cuts her off. And he says, he's like, like, I don't want to talk, don't about, talk it, about it. Or don't use that word. Uh, don't speak of it, is what he says. Um, he does say that he's the only one. Yeah, because she says, you guys exist. And he's like, I do. Yeah. And I thought that was quite a good line as well. Um, <laughs> she asked him what the Civil War was like. And he's like, I don't know. I was in China. <laughs> Which I thought was really funny as well. Um, and they eventually end up at the club. Yeah. Um, he kills the doorman with his own tie through the door. He does. So he strangles, he strangles him through, through, the, through, the, through, the, through the people with his own tie. When he gets in there, he gets shot by the barman with a shotgun. He does. Um, he which gets he stabbed. Again, completely no cells. He gets sold. Uh, he gets st- sold. He gets stabbed and completely no cells that. And then he kills pretty much everybody in the room. He does. Another dude peppers him with bullets in the chest, like five or six right in his chest. Um, he's he's dead now too that's my, my next line he kills him as well and then he goes to find Alex um, he subdues him he does quite quickly and that's what does he do to him I can't even remember what he did to him at this point. Uh, th- there's this, so much going on at this, this point, point he just well. he just beats him up yeah he just takes and him he's, down yeah uh, then Jack goes and finds Andrea yeah she's hidden behind a bookcase hidden behind a bookcase um, he calls Kara and says right come and pick her up yeah I've got I'm, her I'm staying here um, there's no pissing about with like bad guy good guy talky lines that you always get in films none of that he then just goes twists in against the jo- oh. Alex's ankle around completely like, with his bare hands just yeah. twists his foot off yeah <laughs> it was horrible um, and then he just takes Andrew outside the car there's no meat on those bones at all it's literally I mean, a lot of films you would get talky scenes between bad guys and good guys yeah there's, no, that mon- happens. there's no monologuing that happens not really but not until after Andrea is safe. Yeah. So he takes Andrea out to Carla. To Cara, they drive off. Well, no, they, do they? No, I don't think they do quite drive off. No, he, but he they, takes her outside. He takes and her says outside. to Cara, take, take her to the, the hospital. hospital. Uh, I'm yeah. staying here. I'm going to need to finish something. He says, take her to the hospital. Forget you ever knew me. Yeah. Um, they he go. We uh, we assume at that point they've driven off, but they obviously haven't. He goes back inside. Uh, Alex starts begging for his life, and my actual favourite line of this film. Whereas Jack, Alex is kind of begging him not to kill him. And he says, I've killed nine-year-olds for no reason. What makes you think you have a chance? Yeah. I'm like, that is a cracking line. That's absolutely brilliant. He just, he basically just wanted to piss him off, I think. it's Well, yeah, I mean, uh, um, this might be my criticism is, is that Alex kind of says, well, yeah, we took her just to piss you off. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of revenge because, yeah, you killed my dad. You killed my dad. And at this point, I'm like, well, Alex must not have known what Jack is then? No, he mustn't have. He can't have. Yeah. He wouldn't pick a fight with somebody exactly. who's immortal, would you? Um, but he's, he knows that he murdered his dad, so he basically just wanted to piss him off to get him here yeah. so he could kill him, but it didn't really uh, didn't really work. Uh, this is the point where Jack basically just pushes Alex's head against the bar. Yeah, it crushes his head against yeah. the bar. But he puts him on the pool table first. Oh, that's right, yeah. He, puts, he lies him on the pool table and then smashes the pool light over yeah. him. So you know you get these big like rectangular pool lights. Just smashes that on him. Then he crushes his head on the bar. Um, and he's he's trying. He's, it's a really good scene as well because Alex has got his head is on the bar. So Jack puts his head on the bar and they're talking like was lying on the bar next to each other. And he's like, "I'm not only going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to enjoy killing you. Then I'm going to eat you." Yeah. And he says, <laughs> "You you piss me off. All you've succeeded in doing is pissing me off." And because of all this stuff that I've been through, I've turned, I've come off the wagon. Yeah, you've, made, you've made me back into who I was yeah. previously. And uh, referring to the fact he's now eating meat. Yeah, of eating people. I assume he's gone cold turkey on this, and he's yeah. lived a life for a few years since 
killing Jack, uh, Alex's dad. Yeah. Um, he's like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to eat you. I don't want to, but I have to. It keeps my mind straight, is what he says. Um, but then he looks up and this mysterious man from earlier is sitting in, at the bar. Yeah. He doesn't say anything. He's just looking straight ahead. And this is where Henry drink. Rollins does get to do some acting because some he goes acting. apoplectic. He does. He's like, why this now? A pre- uh, appearance. Why now? Why him? And then he starts screaming at this guy. He's like, this guy's a piece of shit. Nobody. Why? Yeah, why are you saving are you this save? guy? Yeah. So basically, Jack was obviously, whoever this guy is, if he appears, Jack, Jack can't. Yeah, people. it's like he's taken over yeah. from Jack. Yeah. Yeah. And Jack's really pissed off about it. Um, he's properly screaming. And then he, Jack he says, says him, Is this because of my brother? Is this because of Abel? Yeah. I think yeah. He says, Because he says, I invented murder when I killed Abel. Yeah. Is this for that reason? And he's like, Let me die. He says, Jack says that to this guy. Um, it was actually a really good monologue. It was like you said a minute ago, it's probably the best bit of acting he does in the film. Um, and then Kara comes running into the room yes. and he's like, I can't get Andrea in the car. I need help. I need help. Yeah, I need you I'm to come now. Enough. Why are you pissing about with this guy in here? Because you can only see Alex who's yeah, almost dead in the bar anyway. Um, he's like, you need to come. You need to help me. You forget whatever you're doing in here. Come and help your daughter. Come and help your do- daughter. And he's like, because Alex at the point was screaming, who are you talking to? When he was talking to the yeah. last man. He turns to Alex and he says, one day you will see who I was talking to. And he walks out the bar. Yeah. He leaves. And then Alex looks up and this mysterious man is standing behind him and he just goes, Hi. But in a like a creepy voice. Demon voice. Demon voice. Hi. Yeah. yeah. And then the film ends. Yeah. Overall, thoughts. I really Nick. enjoyed it. I'd I had a really f- I just thought it was fun. Didn't have to think about it too much. Yeah. But it was relatively high concept in in that it had a good gimmick. Yeah. The whole sort of whatever you want to call it fallen angel kind of you know yeah. first 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 person ever born basically yeah you know that, that, that's what came still is. alive to this day uh, has been gadding around unable to die <laughs> for it's just thousands of years but it's it's a lot funnier than i expected as well. i wasn't expecting well, i humor. found it a lot I found, funnier than i, I, I found expected. it really funny um it's just fun. It's just it's great. I I, had a I was lot really entertained. Same. I I didn't want it to end, and I don't get to say that about the it, films that we watch on here very often. It picked and chose wisely its moments yeah. as well. In terms of right, we're not going to show you this bit of gore because we're saving that for later when yeah. he gets shot in the head. Or, show you that bit. Uh, and it was like I said earlier. It was. It sounds boring to say, <laughs> put it this way, but it was a really well disciplined movie. Yeah. It knew where to keep no, its powder dry and when to press go and and we just don't see that sort of discipline very often no. on this show because of the sort of movies we end up watching as, as far as being a film is concerned it's one of the better ones we've seen recently for definite because it, it like you said it just flows as a proper it's film structured and it well and it's structured well and it's just fun it's really well made it's a lot of fun i had a lot of fun with it it made me laugh more than five or six times i don't know if it's good but it's really fun i think is it's it, good is it, if you there's nothing bad back, about back, it. no there's nothing bad about it back in the day if if you were you know pre-streaming services you know i'm thinking back to my sort of uh uni days or whatever you come in after a couple of years <laughs> and you're flicking around the the tv channels this comes on you're gonna watch it and go that was a really fun surprise. Yeah, and I had a I really agree. good time watching that movie. I agree. It's a great late night, sort of turn your brain off a bit, but but funny, nice surprise. Uh, I, I liked it. I think Rollins was just right for it. Yeah. I don't know if right. he was good in it, but he was just right for There's it. There's two scenes where he got to do some proper good acting, that last scene and the scene where he's reeling up all his jobs. But other than that, he's monotone. He's one word answers to pretty much everything. But it just worked. It worked for the character. No, no, it was really well done. No one's over hamming it either. I think no. everyone kind of knows the movie that they're in. Yeah, and that absolutely. comes across. You, it really came across that this guy's bored of being alive. Yeah, he's bored. He's bored of his life, but he can't do anything about it because this mysterious man in the hat won't let him go. Who, who do we think in this was? Is this? I d- I'm not good with my biblical <laughs> knowledge. I'm sorry. So I don't know if it was like the devil himself. I, I or... was thinking the other way. I think it was God. Well, maybe. <laughs> just, just, that's how I understood it. But that I might got, be completely. Well, it, could it have been Adam? I don't know. I just, you know. It wasn't me. 
I haven't got that hat. Yeah, I don't know. Or other famous angels, not sure. But um, <laughs> Whoever it was, Jack wasn't happy with it. Yeah, and he, he was clearly the boss in this situation. Yeah, so he, he turned up and Jack had to sort of he was renege, being kept alive he? by he this to, guy. He had to step away and leave yeah. um, leave Alex. So you never get guy. the payoff of Alex's death in this film. No. But you also don't feel like you needed because it. Because Jack's being punished. Because Jack's being punished and the ending... I thought the ending was actually really well done. It's batshit. It's completely batshit, but it's really good. Yeah, it was a nice surprise. Yeah, agreed. What's the best bit about it? It's the violence. Yeah, it is. It's it's those comedy scenes of comedy is violence. It, but it's the it's the like I say again the well judged is it's how it's well judged of when those yeah. points need to be in this movie because yeah. it makes them more effective. Yeah, agreed. And and considering this is you know a few years old now, seven years old. I I was I wasn't taken out of it by like oh that was a shit effect even when he was shot point black in the head no I was yeah, like absolutely. no good the, in fact the bit where he's getting the bullet out of his head was really well done I yeah. thought it was really held up nice practical effect yeah as well. so. completely what what would you change about it I don't all right I I'm gonna slightly slightly sidestep this okay question and say it's not what I change about it it's that. I would really be interested to see more of this world. Yes, agreed. So like, and and particularly of Jack. Yeah. I would definitely have watched a TV, TV show, show yeah. based around this character. It's a great character. It's a great idea for a character. I think all, all I would have done is maybe just go a little bit more, bit more batshit with it. Just, you know, like he, um, Don't Kill It did, where there was just like, that one scene. No, but I don't think you can't. You didn't I, need it, but you you wouldn't. The film wouldn't have suffered from having it. I don't. Think. I I think, I think you fall into a trap though. If you do that, then you risk it losing its effectiveness. Yeah. Because I think. No, I think you're right. Because they've stayed in their lane, that has made this maybe a just, better experience. Maybe just me. extend that bit in the bar at the end where he's shooting up people. Maybe just extend that a little bit. Just you, you, we could have there. him ripping throats out yeah. and sh- taking bullets, up, but we can't. You don't want loads of it. That then will look shit because this yeah. movie can't afford to do that. Yeah. And then it becomes something... To be fair, there's not a lot I would change about it. I think it's pretty much up there with greatness. I think it's great. There's not a lot you could change to make it better. I almost would like to see if... Uh, okay, this... this. I almost kind of would want to see another scene, maybe if it's an epilogue or something, of, of Jack explaining to Andrea what the hell's gone on. Yeah. Because she's just been left in this situation and it's I can't it, it sounds weird for this sort of funny action film but another scene between him and her post all these events yeah sort yeah of, maybe you're right this maybe is the who scene you of them, are and this is the scene of them going out to the car to yeah. help Andrea and getting that drive so I, th- I think we would her character was left shortchanged yeah a little bit if anybody was hers was a little yeah. bit cool stream table sure Where am I reading from? That's what we do. Uh, top 10? Yeah, I think so. I think it's top 10. I think it is. Um, number 10 currently is Arlo the Alligator Boy. Number 9 is I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. Number 8 is Before I Wake. They're the last week's, last two weeks' films. Uh, 7 is Aries. 6 is Good Time. 5 is Orbiter 9. 4 is Hello, My Name is Doris. 3 is What Happened to Monday. 2 is Under the Shadow. And currently number 1 is Apostle. Thoughts, Nick? What's your original... What's your instincts? Uh, my instinct is that it sneaks into the top 10. Just into the top 10. I think so. I feel like it's about on a par with last week's movie. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I don't think I'd go any higher than before I wake. So I think you're right. It's either side of I don't feel at home in this world anymore. We have three weeks in a row in the in a row on the table at this, at this rate. I mean, that yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. We've had three week, good weeks of films. <laughs> Three top ten films in three weeks. They're solid. They're three solid films. Yeah, I wouldn't have them in the same order as they're on this table. But it's your table. <laughs> it's not. I though, wouldn't either though. because before I wake too high, I'm not going down <laughs> this rabbit hole again. I, I, it's top ten definitely. Yeah, agreed. I, but I, I, th- I think it's about on a par with last week's movie. I feel like I enjoyed it about the same as last week's movie. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Agree. I think I would put it above it. But Personally, I, yes, but, but then we're getting in a difficult argument because I would then put it above the next one as well, and <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't yeah, exactly. So we agree to disagree there, yeah. and just put so it I think I think it squeezes into the top ten. I think that's fair. Well, below, I don't feel I'm in this world. Yes, okay, fine. I'm, I don't. 
I, I really enjoyed this film, but I really enjoyed that film as well. And yeah. I, I don't have the. I'm so, I'm kind of sad to see Arlo me. at this uh, late drop stage out drop out of the top ten. Arlo the alligator boy. Same. But I'm afraid it's 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 got to happen. There's no way around it. We could take good time out, but that's <laughs> that's your call. <laughs> uh, funnily enough, I read an article at some point in the last couple of days, and it was hidden gems on Netflix. Oh really? A good time was in it. Oh really? Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> it's not just me. Uh, yeah, I, I I think tenth is. I I'd agree. I don't think I don't care. It goes one side or the other. If I don't feel home in this world anymore, and I'm not yeah. bothered which side it goes on. It's somewhere around those two films. But that I think that, it's, uh, this eight, nine, and ten are pretty interchangeable. Yeah, I agree. And and we're splitting there, so uh, let's uh, put it tenth. The, it rounds the it top up, ten honestly. in this table is strong. Yeah, really I think so. Strong. I think it's really, a strong really top strong. ten. There's one more film to go in this table. Do you want to do you want to pick it? Let's do it. What's gonna be? The twenty fifth episode of season six, the finale episode. What would you like it to be? I, I kind of had my action whistle wetted this month. Whistle wetted uh, this week, but it still wasn't balls to the wall, was it? <laughs> no. So I'm I'm going action. Okay, it'll happen. I'm gonna press the button. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> it has picked a film called Flying Monkeys. Okay, fine. <laughs> of course it has. Any ideas? I yeah I I um. I, I've seen this on the list. It has been on the list for a little while. It's about some flying monkeys, I presume. <laughs> yeah. This is a horror creature feature. Do you want the synopsis? Yes, please. Teenager Joan gets more... Teenager Joan. Who's called Joan? <laughs> Teenager Joan gets more than she bargained for when her workalo- workaholic dad buys her a cute pet monkey who grows wings, fangs, and an insatiable thirst for blood come nightfall. I'm all aboard. <laughs> all aboard. It's a TV movie from 2013. Oh, okay. According to IMDb, not rated. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> it's one an hour and twenty six minutes long. Currently rated three point six out of ten on IMDb. It looks batshit. I think you may have your uh, crazy quota filled. Okay, I'm I'm up for some flying monkeys. Flying monkeys. Those guys have been out of the work out of work a lot since the Wizard of Oz, haven't they? So <laughs> they really have. Uh, do you want to know who's in it? Yes, please. Micah Monroe is in it. Oh, okay. She's this, becoming a bit of a regular. This will be her third appearance on the show. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it, that? Uh, she was in Tau and she was in Villains, yes. which won last season. It did. So maybe she could win two seasons in a row. Oh, that would be a first. If Flying Monkeys can win it. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Anything's possible. So yeah, go out and watch Flying Monkeys. And in the meantime, go and check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Letterboxd at B-O-T-S underscore podcast. If you want to drop us an email, our email address is bottom of the stream at gmail.com. If you want to go to our website, our website is bottomofthestream.com. On the website, you'll find every episode we've ever recorded. You'll find all of the stream tables, all of the other cool stuff, and you can even get some merch if you want a bottom of the stream pajama set. <laughs> is that because you were yawning when yeah. I said that? Yeah. Nice. After you've done all of that, head over to Patreon, patreon.com slash bottom of the stream. On there, for a couple of quid every month, you will get early access to episodes. You will get bonus episodes. Nick's writes a newsletter every month, and if you come in at the top level, you will get a wild card, which means you can pick one of the films that we watch per season and when you've done all of that head over to discord um, we've got a really nice community of cool people in there we talk about movies and stuff all the time uh, we've got another watch along coming in a couple of weeks is it next week or the week after one of those soon <laughs> i think another it might be easter sunday oh is it uh, possibly okay so i think we might be watching a movie and eating lots of chocolate, chocolate. Easter eggs. sounds good to me uh, we're gonna watch diana the musical yeah fun times i can't wait i'm excited so yeah, go come and join us in our Discord. The Discord link will be in the bottom of the show notes. If you can spare a few minutes, please consider leaving us a review or a rating. Anywhere you can review and rate podcasts because it really helps put us in the eyes and ears of more people. really helps those little algorithms. Uh, you can do that on Podbean, Podchaser, uh, Apple, iTunes, Podcasts. I, <laughs> I can never remember what that one's called. Uh, Spotify, uh, Cephalopod, any of those. It's all good. Maybe you could... Use a bingo card. Play bottom of the stream bingo. Someone should invent bottom of the stream bingo. We should invent bottom of the stream bingo. <laughs> we'll do that. And reviewers... We'll do it in Discord. Using that somehow. But I've trailed <laughs> off. I don't know. But I'm You're sure... you by bottom of the stream Yeah, bingo. I did. I did. <laughs> Easily distracted. Uh, just leave us a review. It really helps. Please do. It does really help. We're Get your up... dobber out. That's what they're and called, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. They had massive dobbers in this film. Yeah, they were... M- massive. Yeah, big dobbers. Big old dobbers. So yeah, do all of that and then... Go out and watch Flying Monkeys and we'll come back on Monday for the last wave of the season and on Thursday for the finale of the season with Flying Monkeys. Cheers. Bye.